I'm really sorry. It's okay. Take your time and tell me slowly. Even though she was on the verge of tears, I gently encouraged my niece, who was trying to speak to me. Well, actually. Before saying anything further, my niece pulled something out of her pocket and played an audio recording. This. This is. I was shocked by the voice I heard and cursed my own foolishness. I had no idea the situation was so tragic and difficult. I wept at the overwhelming revelation and steeled myself for what I had to do next. My name is Kathy. I work at an IT company, where I am a hard-working career woman. Despite being a woman, I hold a position of responsibility and earn enough to live comfortably. Although I could live on my own, I live with my parents because my workplace is close to home, and I can also work remotely. I contribute financially to the household, and my parents prefer to live with me because they would be lonely otherwise. I have an older sister, who is two years my senior. She used to live happily with her kind husband and their daughter, Susan. However, her husband passed away from an illness three years ago. At his funeral, seeing my sister completely exhausted, I said, Sis, why don't you come back home until things settle down? You also have Susan to think about. Thank you for worrying, Kathy. But I'll be fine. She refused to come back home. At the time, I found it a bit strange that she was so adamant about not returning but I assumed it was because she was always strong-willed and didn't want to rely on our parents. She continued to work and raise her child as a single mother. Knowing the burden on her increased after her husband's death, I stayed in frequent contact with her. She always reassured me that she was fine, repeating the same response each time. Despite our communication, my sister fell ill a year ago and passed away. We took Susan, still an elementary school student, into our home. Since coming to live with us, Susan seemed very down. I remembered her as a cheerful and energetic girl when her parents were alive. She used to be so lively. Losing both parents in quick succession must have been a terrible shock. I wanted her to regain her energy as soon as possible. I often saw my parents trying to talk to her, but she didn't respond. On days off, I suggested we go out together, but she wasn't interested. Not wanting to force her, I didn't push too hard. About three months passed, and Susan started apologizing to me, crying when my parents weren't around. Kathy, I'm sorry. What happened? Did something bother you? No, it's not that. But, I'm sorry. I was taken aback because she had never cried before. Her sudden tears surprised me. However, she wouldn't tell me why, just kept apologizing and crying. But she didn't cry when my parents were around, which made me increasingly curious. Another thing that puzzled me was how my parents suddenly started going on frequent trips a few years ago. While it was fine for them to travel occasionally, I couldn't see how they could afford it on my contributions and their pensions. My father had only been a manager at a small company, and after retiring, he hadn't worked because I supported them. My mother had been a housewife all her life and had never worked outside the home. Despite this, I ended up doing most of the household chores. Mom, Dad, it's fine to travel sometimes, but please save some money. You don't need to tell us that. We're careful with our spending. I worked hard for you all these years. And we don't have much time left. Don't say things like that. Then let us enjoy ourselves. Stop meddling in our affairs. All right. I tried to gently suggest they save money, but they brushed it off, 
saying they had little time left, which left me exasperated. Whenever they went on resort trips, Susan seemed like she wanted to tell me something but never did. I decided not to push her to speak until she was ready. A few months later, my father approached me, looking quite pleased. Oh, Kathy. Yes. What's up? Your mother and I are going on a week-long overseas trip soon. What? An overseas trip? How can you afford it? I just told you to save money. We came into a bit of money. From where? Does it matter? Let us create some memories in our old age. Your mother is right. Let us have this experience of traveling abroad. All right, fine. Although I found it suspicious that they wouldn't disclose the source of their money, I decided not to pry any further, thinking it was their money after all. We'll be off now. Take care of things at home. Got it. Have a safe trip. On the day of their trip, my parents left cheerfully, promising to bring back souvenirs. After seeing them off, I turned to go back to the living room and found my niece standing there, looking like she was about to cry. Realizing this situation couldn't continue, I decided to ask her what was wrong. Susan, what's the matter? Your grandparents have left for their trip. It's just the two of us now, so take your time and tell me anything. I, I'm sorry. As I gently asked her, she began to cry and apologize again. Unsure of what to do, I continued to encourage her. Kathy, actually. She took out her smartphone from her pocket and pressed play. The recording that played was filled with my parents' angry voices. What is this? No matter how I listened, it was clearly my parents' voices. However, they had never raised their voices like this before. I had never heard them shout like this, and I was shocked. Is this really Grandpa and Grandma? Yes. They often came over when my parents were still alive. Susan began to explain. According to her, my parents frequently visited her home when they were alive, constantly nagging and complaining. The complaints revolved around disapproval of my sister's marriage and irrational demands for money, claiming it was compensation for taking their daughter away. I was shocked to hear my parents were such people. Susan continued, saying they would often threaten her parents under the guise of visiting to see their granddaughter, extorting money from them. Every time they came, I would hide in my room. Your parents probably didn't want you to be frightened by their behavior. I think so too. But I was always terrified because they were constantly yelling at my parents. I see. That must have been tough. But how did you manage to record this? Susan explained that she had been given an old smartphone of her parents as a toy, and she happened to have it with her at the time, so she recorded their voices. I was grateful she had done this. I asked another question that had been bothering me. Susan, how often did they come to your house? I think it was almost every week. To think they visited my sister's family that often without my knowledge. Now that I thought about it, my sister and her husband had started to look more haggard every time I saw them. When I asked my sister if she was okay, she had said they were dieting together, which I had taken at face value. But in reality, it must have been the strain from my parents' demands that wore them down. I cursed myself for not pressing for the real reason. If I had noticed something was wrong sooner, this wouldn't have happened. I'm sorry for keeping it hidden, but I was scared of what Grandpa and Grandma might do if I told you. Susan began to cry again, and I held her close, regretting my lack of awareness. I'll protect you from now on, 
Susan. Don't worry. But what if they do something to you too? Don't worry about me. I won't lose to them. Let's get back at them together, okay? Yes. If I'm with you, I'm not scared. Let me help. Seeing the determination in her eyes, I nodded. During the week my parents were away, we made preparations. I felt even stronger with Susan by my side so I asked her more. I recalled how frugal my sister and her husband had been. My sister had once told me they rarely carried cash, preferring to use bank transfers. If they gave money to my parents, it must have been through transfers. There would surely be some trace left. I began searching the house and soon found what I was looking for. I knew it. For all their greed, they weren't careful. Finding this passbook was too easy. I examined my parents' bank passbook and confirmed the amounts that had been deposited while my sister and her husband were alive. They transferred this much every month? No wonder they lived so frugally. Gripping the passbook, I trembled with anger. I decided to take the passbook to a private investigator to uncover the full extent of my parents' dealings with my sister and her husband. A few days later, I was summoned to the office. Here is the investigation report. I took the report from the investigator and began to read. No way. According to the report, my brother-in-law had been borrowing money from financial institutions to pay my parents. As a result, he became mentally exhausted and fell ill, leading to his death. As I read through the report, my anger grew even more. It turned out that my sister had been working herself to death, trying to pay off my brother-in-law's debts and my parents' constant demands for money. Additionally, my parents had been treating my niece cruelly when I wasn't around, saying things like they were doing her a favor by letting her stay with them. Knowing this, I started to cry. How horrible. How could this have happened without me knowing? Furthermore, we discovered that your parents even took your brother-in-law's insurance money. You can't be serious. I reviewed the additional report. It confirmed that my parents had indeed taken my brother-in-law's insurance money. They must have used that money for their frequent trips. I thanked the lawyer and headed home. Until my parents returned from their overseas trip, my niece and I prepared our plan. Do you think we can do this? Don't worry. We still have time, so let's practice as much as we need. Okay. I'll do my best. We practiced our plan until Susan felt confident. A few days later, we were ready and waited for my parents' return. We had set up several cameras around the house to capture everything on video and audio as evidence. Of course, I had discussed this with my lawyer and received approval. We're home. Welcome back. Did you have fun? Yes, it was great. Where's Susan? We bought lots of souvenirs. Susan's doing her homework in her room. You must be tired from the trip, so why not rest for a bit? Yeah, that sounds good. How about some tea? All right, I'll make it. Shall I make it? No. I'll do it. I always make your father's tea. All right, understood. My parents returned home full of excitement. It was their first overseas trip, so they must have enjoyed it immensely. I listened to their travel stories for a while. Oh, sorry. I have to step out for a bit. I got a call from work. At this hour? It happens sometimes. I'll be back soon. 
Take care. Yes, I will. When I thought they had relaxed a bit, I excused myself, pretending to go to work. This was the signal for our plan. After leaving the house, I called Susan. Hey Susan, I've left the house. Got it. Susan kept our call connected as she went to my parents. Ah, welcome back. Oh, Susan. We brought back lots of souvenirs. Well, thank you. But I need to talk to you. What is it? Speak up. Following my father's words, Susan played the recorded audio she had. Hey, where did you get that? Susan, be a good girl and give that to me. My parents were visibly shocked and panicked by the recorded audio. I plan to let Kathy hear this. Susan, please don't do that. Do you know what will happen if you do that? But, this isn't right. We took you in when you had nowhere else to go, so you should listen to us. Yes, if it weren't for us, we wouldn't be getting any welfare benefits. Um, then why are you kind to Kathy? My parents became furious and started berating Susan. Despite being on the verge of tears, Susan continued in a trembling voice. <laughs> We're nice to her because she brings money into the house. That's right. We're living off your father's pension now, so we don't have money. If Kathy leaves, we'll be in trouble. Exactly. As long as she's around, she'll always give us money when we need it. She's a convenient fool. That's awful. Hearing my parents' true feelings, I decided not to let Susan suffer anymore and headed back home. My anger, already at its peak, boiled over as I rushed into the living room. I heard everything. I burst through the door, raising my voice. Oh, what? Kathy? How long have you been here? What about work? I don't care about work. I heard what you really think about me. You see me as nothing more than a cash cow and a housekeeper. Of course. We're not working anymore. How else are we supposed to live on just a pension? That's right. We need your help to survive. They didn't deny it and instead shamelessly demanded money from me. The thought of staying in this house for their sake made me sick. If that's how you feel, I won't give you any more money. I'm taking Susan, and we're leaving. Don't ever contact us again. I won't allow it. How will we live without you? I know everything. I know you took money from my sister and brother-in-law. What are you talking about? Susan, did you? I'm sorry. I told Kathy everything. Exactly. We have all the evidence, so don't bother arguing. I told Susan to get her things, and she nodded and went to her room. Hey, are you serious, Kathy? You're joking, right? You wouldn't abandon us. No, I'm not joking. I can't believe you were such awful people. When Susan returned with her belongings, I took her hand, and we left the house. We stayed at a hotel near my workplace, as I had arranged beforehand. However, we didn't stay at the hotel for long. Within a few days, I found a new place to live. A few days after Susan and I moved into our new home, I received a call from the police. Really? Is that true? The police told me my parents had been arrested for shoplifting. No way. I had only been gone a few days. 
There's no way the money I gave them could have run out so quickly. Besides, they were getting welfare benefits for taking care of Susan. With these thoughts, I reluctantly went to the police as their guarantor. My parents, looking repentant, apologized. I'm sorry. We just made a mistake. I apologized to the police and took my parents back to the house. With no money, the electricity, gas, and water had been cut off. The house was in a terrible state, reeking of filth. My mother had never been good at housekeeping, and it showed in just a few days. How did everything get cut off? Were you that broke? And what's with this mess? Of course we're broke. We were enjoying our retirement. I can't do housework anymore. I'm not as young as I used to be. You took Susan, so we stopped getting welfare. My pension isn't enough to live on. Exactly. If you had kept giving us money, we wouldn't have had to steal. My parents angrily blamed me for their situation. I could only sigh at their absurdity. This is your own fault. How many times did I tell you to save money? Yet you kept going on week-long trips every few months. Enough of that. Just give us the money. Pay for the utilities. We can't live here without them. And get a cleaning service. This place is uninhabitable. They kept demanding money and blamed everything on me. I was beyond anger. I was simply fed up. All right. You refuse to acknowledge your faults. In that case, I'm done. What? What are we supposed to acknowledge? I see. You won't admit your fault. Fine. This is the last time I'll speak to you. I'm cutting ties with you. Don't contact me again. I left the house. A month later, the house was vacant. The house, in my name, was sold, forcing my parents to leave. They had forgotten that detail. After some time had passed, I went to apologize to the neighbors for any trouble caused. They told me loan sharks had been lurking around, indicating my parents had turned to them for money. Rumor had it they were seen in a park, looking disheveled. Later, I legally separated from my parents and adopted Susan as my daughter. Now, we share a bond stronger than most parent-child relationships. Our life stabilized, and Susan regained her cheerful spirit, making me happy. I vowed to continue watching over her and make my late sister proud. How did you like this story? Please subscribe to my channel. See you in the next video.